Welcome to this tutorial on 2D drawing within Rhino 7. In this video we're going to be looking at the polyline tool and how we can use this tool to accurately draw out 2D shapes within Rhino. The polyline tool can be found in the left hand menu here under this little polyline icon. It can also be found if we start to type in polyline into our command line here and it will pop up as a command which we can also access here as a shortcut to the tool. Once we select that polyline tool you'll see a small crosshair appear on your model space and this essentially indicates exactly where we want to start our particular line. Now if you're ever in doubt about how any tools work in Rhino you can have a look up in this command line and it will tell you exactly what the command is looking for. So to begin our line all we need to do is left click within our model space and you can see it begins to draw out our line here. If we left click again within that space, we will then finish that first line segment and it will begin to draw a next one. And so on and so on. And the way that the polyline tool works is it essentially creates a string of lines for us that are all connected up together. Now in order to finish this string of lines, all we need to do is right click on our mouse or hit enter on our keyboard and the line will end creating our kind of string of lines here. Now one of the key uses for the polyline tool in Rhino is actually to create what's called closed loops or closed curves. And this can be done by selecting the polyline tool, beginning to draw out your line like so. And then when we reach the end, we then connect it back to the original point that we started with. Now what you'll find is currently at the moment, if I hover over that point and try to connect them, no matter how close I get, if I zoom in, they'll never quite be touching here. And the reason for that is because we haven't got what's called our snaps turned on to allow us to snap accurately to some key points within that line. So in order to turn these on, we need to go back down to the bottom of our menu here and turn on this little snap icon we can see here. With that turned on, you'll then get all of these options at the bottom for different types of snaps we can have in this space. And we're gonna turn on the end snap and the point snap to start with. Now you'll see if I hover over that end point, a little point icon will come up and this will allow us to snap onto that precise point. And you'll see when we do that, the polyline tool will end because we've created what's called a closed curve. And you can see there that that corner is nicely joined together. You can check that these curves are closed by selecting the object just by left clicking on it and having a look up at your command bar and it will say one closed curve added to selection which means we know that curve is closed up and is perfectly sealed. If we select this one here it will say one open curve because it's not closed it has a big open edge on this left hand side. So the difference between closed curves and open curves is that with closed curves we can start to extrude these and pull these into 3D geometry which we're going to be looking at in some of the next videos in this series. Now this is all good for creating kind of shapes like this but we can also begin to draw accurately using the polyline tool. You'll find that when you use the polyline tool it will automatically flatten itself down onto this model space as we can see here in our perspective view. So what I'm going to do for the time being as we're just going to be drawing in 2D in this video I'm going to double click on the top view to make this 2D view larger for us to see. We're going to just delete out these two lines here and we're now going to select the polyline tool again but we're going to try and draw with a little bit more accuracy and to start with we're just going to be starting to draw out an accurate box with some specified dimensions that I'm going to be using. Now we're going to click anywhere to start our box tool out and next we're going to specify the kind of length of the box that we like here. Now you can see as I begin to draw this line down here we've got a little dimension which goes up and down depending on the length of the line I'm drawing. Now if I wanted this to be exactly 50 millimeters in this case what I can do is I can actually just type in 50 on my keyboard and what you'll see there is it now kind of locks that crosshair at exactly the 50 point. So this is 50 millimeters from that first point we drew. You'll see here I can draw it in any direction. It's not locking exactly which direction it's going in, but it's locking that distance. So when I left click on my mouse, it's then drawn an exactly 50, meter, 50 millimeter long line in this case. Now we can do that for each of these dimensions, typing in those exact values as we go, just using our kind of numbers on our keypads to type in specific values there. And this is the beginning of allowing us to draw accurately within this software. 
if we just use Control z to just go back to the beginning point here, it might also be, in this case if we're wanting to draw an accurate box, that once you type in 50 millimeters, you also want to lock it horizontally. Now sometimes, depending on some of the lines you're drawing, you will get this kind of automatic snap that comes up, and this is controlled by the Smart Track icon here, which will kind of track it to what it thinks you might be trying to achieve with this tool. But we can also automatically snap it to that horizontal line by holding down the Shift key on our keyboard. And you see when I do that, it will just snap to the closest horizontal or vertical line if we're at a kind of more vertical angle there. So using the Shift key will allow us to lock our line horizontally. So then if once we've typed in 50, hold down the Shift key and left click, we've then drawn a nice 50 millimeter line in that horizontal direction. If we then want to do this vertically, I can draw a 25 millimeter line by typing in 25, holding the Shift key again and left clicking to lock that in. Now what you'll find is if we want to kind of complete our square, we can do this in a couple of ways. One might be that we just lock in using the Shift key, type in 50 again, because I knew that exact dimension, and that will give me that other edge of my box. Another way we can do this is if we don't know this dimension for any reason, we can hold the Shift key to lock us into this horizontal plane. And what you'll find is if I try and snap to that endpoint, it will automatically just connect it back up. But if we want to keep this line horizontal, if I then press the tab key once on my keyboard and let go of all the keys, you'll see then it's now locked that line permanently in that horizontal motion. And that's what the tab key allows us to do. It allows us to lock a line in a particular direction. So if I say I want the line in this diagonal projection, for example, I can press the tab key and it will lock that line in that diagonal. So you can use the tab key here to lock a line in any given direction. And for this one, we're gonna hold the shift key to put us in that horizontal plane and then press the tab key to lock it in that plane. Then what I can do is just hover over that beginning point and it will make a nice horizontal line matching that first point. And then I can left click again to terminate my line back at the start, thus creating a kind of nice straight box which we can use for our model here. So that's how you begin to start to accurately draw using the polyline tool. And as a kind of last feature I want to cover with this tool, if we select the polyline tool, we can actually draw things other than straight lines using this tool. And this can be done if we left click to begin our line and look up at our command bar here, you'll see that there's this little mode option. And at the moment it says mode equals line. If we click on this mode, it will change it to arc and essentially allow us to draw kind of arcs of a circle, which we can then draw out using the same tool. So we could draw kind of in arcs like this and start to draw out more kind of curvy shapes using the polyline tool again, but giving us an arc instead of a line in this case. If you want to go back to using lines, you can just click that mode again and it will turn you back to the line tool here. So you can quite easily switch between arcs and lines as we begin to draw using this tool. You can see here that little mode option is underlined and the letter M there, and actually that indicates to us a shortcut we can use. So if we hit the letter M on our keyboard and hit enter, it will actually switch back to an arc again. So as a quick shortcut for you just to switch from line to arc, just using the letter M on your keyboard to create those lines. And I'm just gonna join this up to create our closed loop there. So that was just a quick introduction to using the Polyline tool in Rhino 7 for accurate drawing. I hope you found this video useful and in the next video on this series we're going to be trying to look at how we can introduce some other 2D drawing tools to cut and trim certain lines together to form different shapes. Thank you for watching.